Uh, so today, what we're going to do is uh, we're going to do another project, a little different, but perhaps approximately the same difficulty level. So what we're going to learn, and uh, you probably learned it by now, there's a theme in this course, and uh, I don't know why, but uh, we're going to be doing craps today. So there's that word again, uh, but this time we're not going to be replacing it. Instead, we're going to be playing it. That's right. Oh yeah, you guessed it. I'm going to teach you how to gamble. Um, but you see, the thing is, everybody should learn how to gamble because it's a really easy way to make money and you don't even have to work. So uh, therefore, I think, you know, that's what we should do today. We should learn how to gamble. So let's, uh, let's learn the rules of craps. Okay, so all you gotta do is go to uh, Wikipedia, because uh, that is the ultimate resource of all correct information in the world, Wikipedia. And um, so, uh, let's go game. And so there it is, yay! All right, let's 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 see if we can figure it out here. So craps is played with dice, and that's why you can see I've got this little dice program on the right hand side uh, that I've made. And so the way you you play the game, okay, is you first place a bet, a certain amount of money, and then you roll the dice. Now I'm specifically talking about the person rolling the dice. We're not gonna be talking about other people at the table or anything like that. Um, but there's a graphic, and here it is. This is the one that I wanted to kind of show you. Unfortunately, it's, it's hidden by this a little bit, so I'm gonna move this down. There, perfect. Okay, so, now if you look at this graphic, this, this, all you really need to understand the game is, is this table here. So, with a pair of dice, and, and a dice has essentially, uh, you know, one to six, one to six on two die. When you roll it, everything in red, so the way, I'll just kind of go through it and then I'll fill in the gaps as I'm going along because it, it, I'm not, I can't explain everything all at once. So if you roll, notice this is one to six at the top here and this is one to six along the side. If you roll a one and a one, that's called snake eyes and you lose. So that's a loss. Imme that's an immediate loss. Okay? If you roll a 1 and a 2, it's also a loss because it's in red. And it's called ace deuce. If you roll a 6 and a 6, that's called box cars and it's also a loss. Okay? So, on the other hand, if you roll a six and a one, that's a natural and you win. If you roll a five and a two, that's a seven, that's called a natural and you win. If you roll a three and a four, that's a natural and you win, okay? Also, if you roll a five and a six, that's called a yo leaven, and that's also a win, okay? Everything else on the board in the like um, kind of light blue color is called rolling a mark. So therefore, um, now you might ask, well, what happens if you roll a mark? Obviously, I understand if you get the red once you lose immediately, and if you get the green ones, you win immediately. But what about all the other ones? Well, what happens if you roll, let's say, for example, if you roll a six and a two, which is an eight. If you roll an eight, the eight now becomes your mark. And then what you have to do is you have to roll again until one of two things happens. You either get another eight, in which case you win, or if you roll a seven, in which case you lose. 
Now, you might say, well, what if you roll neither of those two things? What if you don't roll a 7 or an 8? Well, then you keep rolling. So, essentially, uh, you keep rolling until you get one of those two things. So, in other words, on your first roll, a 7 is really good because you win. But if you don't get a 7, if you don't win or lose instantly on your first roll with one of the red or green boxes, then that means, let's say, for example, you, you might have rolled a, a 4, okay, like a 2 and a 2. Well, that now becomes your mark. So you have to roll another 4 to win before you roll a 7. So if you keep rolling and you roll a 7, you've lost. So let's play the game and um, hopefully this will make more sense once we start playing. All right, so here we go. Uh, I'm now going to roll the dice and I have rolled a 9. Okay, so 9 now becomes my mark. And so now, I, and that's neither a loss nor a win. So I'm going to have a win and loss column here, okay? So wins and losses, okay? So I, I, this game isn't over yet. So now I'm going to roll again. Come on, lucky nine. And I rolled a seven. That means I lost, okay? So let's play again. So that game is now that game is now over. Okay? Let's play again. Here we go. Roll. Okay, I have rolled an 11. Now if you remember you go back, what's an 11? A 5 and a 6 is a yo 11. I win. I and I won that on my first roll. Okay? So I now have a win. Excellent. That's done. So that was 11 win. By the way, this one, after rolling my, my mark here, the 9, I rolled a 7 and that becomes a loss. Okay? Uh, so let's play another game. Here we go. Roll. Oh, I got a 3. Okay. Uh, do you remember what the 3 was? A one and a two is ace deuce. That's an instant loss. Okay, so that's a loss. I got another one for my loss. All right, let's play another game. So that game ended on the first roll. Here we go. Oh, 11 again. Wow, I am getting lucky. Okay, that's yo 11. So far I'm, I'm even. So far, I'm even, okay? Let's play again, right? Because what do you do? You always keep playing when you're gambling, okay? Oh, box cars. Box cars is, or sorry, I, I messed up. That's not box cars. That's snake eyes. Yeah, snake eyes. One, one and a one, that's snake eyes. Uh-oh, I. Um, that's a loss, so. Okay, another one for the loss. And what do you do when you lose? Everybody knows the answer to this. You keep playing. Right, okay, here we go. Watch, I'm going to win this one. Ten. Okay, so now it becomes interesting. Because now this is now called a mark. So at this point, it's neither a win nor a loss. I have to keep rolling, okay? So I have to roll a 10. It doesn't matter how I get the 10. It doesn't have to be a 6 and a, uh, a 4. It could be a 5 and a 5. As long as I roll a 10, I win. Please no 7. I have to roll again. Here we go. Roll. 4. Nothing happens. I keep playing. <gasps> 10! Awesome! I made, it's called making my mark. So I've made the mark, right? That was my original. I've made the mark and now I win. So you can see how when you lose, you basically always win after you lose. So it's always good to keep playing. So now let's play another game, right? 
After all, I'm only even at this point. I still have to make some money. I can't leave the table without, leave, without making some money in my pocket, right? That's not really realistic. So here we go. Let's rule again. Next game. Eight. Okay, so now eight becomes my mark. This is neither a win nor a loss. So I have to roll again. Three. Notice this is not a seven and it's not an eight, so I keep rolling. Let's roll again. Five. Neither a win nor a loss. Okay? I have to keep rolling. Seven! Woohoo! Yes! I told you I was going to go ahead. So that is now a win. Okay. Oh, sorry. Oh my God. I'm a moron. Uh, I actually just lost. A seven is a loss. Okay. Uh, yeah. Get with the game, man. Come on. So, uh, yeah, no, no, no. That, that was a loss. Uh, too bad. I was really hoping to win there. Um, I keep losing. Oh, this is horrible. Well, let's just play one more because I know I'm going to win the next one. I'm just so positive. By the way, I just want to be clear here. That seven was a loss. Please don't think that's a win. I, I lost that, okay? Because if you get a seven after your first roll, I didn't make my mark and I lost. Okay, next one. Now, I know I'm going to win this one. Ready? Here we go. Okay. Oh, look. I got eight again. So eight's my mark again. All right. Here we go. Come on. Come on. Eight. No, I got a four. Come on. Eight. No, I got a five. Come on. Eight. <gasps> Woohoo! Yeah! I made my mark. Excellent. Well, you know what, guys? At this point, um, uh, I'm going to stop this because I think you guys kind of get the, the concept of the whole game. Unfortunately, I wasn't able to actually make any money. I simply broke even. Uh, I had four losses and four wins. Well, you know, what can you do? I guess if this was a real casino, I'd just have to keep playing until I win a lot of money and then I could go home. So um, in any case, um, right now, what I'd like you to, to kind of try here is try and write um, one of the red or green boxes. If you get any of the other ones, then you're going to have multiple rolls being displayed. So I just, just display the values of the dice and then say, you know, it's a win or a loss. That's it. Now, please understand that if you don't win or lose on the first try, the number of rolls that you have to do, right, is unknown, okay? So obviously in, in this one I won, and then this one I won, but in this one I lost. But it, it, I might have to roll the dice 10 times before I roll uh, a seven or my mark. So Think about what type of a loop you have to use when you don't know how many times something has to occur. That should give you a little bit of help. All right, so pause the video now and uh, give this a shot, okay? Once again, I seriously urge you not to continue watching this as it's going to ruin any type of learning uh, that you could potentially make by trying this on your own. Good luck. Pause the video. Okay, guys. Yeah, we're back. So let's, uh, let's try to write this program. Oops. Let's import random. Uh, let's now make a function called roll. Roll's not going to take anything, but it is going to return the sum of two random dice rolls. So we're going to go, let's say, uh, d1 equals random dot rand range uh, 1 comma 7. 7 because, you know, just like range, we have to go uh, one further. And then that's the first die. By the way, this is extremely important. We cannot 
I stress you cannot create a random number between 2 and 12. And the reason is because then every number between 2 and 12 has an equal chance of occurring. But that's not what you want for the sum. Why? Because if you think about it, the odds of getting a specific number by rolling dice is not even. For example, think about how many different ways can you roll two? Only one. Snake eyes is just one and one. But how many different ways can you roll seven? Well, you can get four and three. You can get five and two. You can get six and one. So it's more likely to roll seven than it is one. So the odd, So in order to mimic the correct uh, odds of rolling a dice, we need to actually generate two random numbers and between one to six, that's perfect, that's fine. And then we, we should return uh, the sum of those two, right? Uh, D1 plus D2. Okay, so there's a function just to roll a dice. Now, what am I gonna do? Well, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to um, say, um, let's say, I don't know, uh, r equals, or uh, I don't know, some total roll. I don't want to call it roll and, and then call the function roll. So um, I'll call it r. Okay, r is my roll, so I'm calling it. Now, uh, I have to kind of make a decision. If my, if r is equal to a, a two, or r is equal to a, a three, or now r is equal to a, a what was the other ones? Uh, let's just try and remember here. Uh, a 2, a 3, or a 12. Okay. Then uh, I've automatically lost. So I will say print you lose. Okay. Instantly. On the other hand, I'll say elif r is equal to now what are my what are my wins i think it's a 7 or r equals uh, 11 okay so you can see here it's a a 7 natural 7 or a yo 11 those are wins instantaneously okay so in that case i would say print uh, you win. Okay? Now on the other hand, now it's everything else. Okay? And on the other hand, you know, right? Like, so, oops, what are the other possibilities? Right? There is um, a 4, a 5, a 6, an 8, a 9, a 10, and, uh, well, that, I guess that's it. So 11, 12 is already taken account for, and 2 and 3 is already taken account for, and 7. So at this point, um, my mark, right, is equal to R. So whatever I've rolled, that's my mark now, okay? Now what I'm going to do is, I, I don't really know how many times I have to roll. So therefore, I'm just going to say while true, and I'm just going to go into a, a while loop. And I know, I know this is a, an infinite loop, but I am going to break out of it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to roll again. I'm going to say r equals roll. Notice how it's really um, convenient now to call the, the roll, right? And at this point, if r is equal to my mark, then I'm going to say print uh, you win. Okay. But honestly, though, I, I shouldn't just print you win. I 
should actually print my rolls. So um, let's let's do this here. Let's go print R, and then um, let's copy that, and then uh, so. And then after I do this, let's print my role here as well. OK? Um, at this point now, I'll say elif uh, r is equal to 7, then I'm going to say print you lose. OK? And so by the way, listen, if I win, uh, I should stop playing, right? Or I should stop rolling. So I'm going to break out of this loop if I win. Now, if I, if I, if I lose, I'm also going to break out. So obviously, it's over. So in other words, the only way this loop is going to stop is if I roll my mark or if I roll a 7. So I'm breaking out in either case. Okay. Um, that's good enough. I mean, I could have specified something different up here, but this is pretty clear. And um, so let's let's try running this, and let's see what happens. Okay, I've got a syntax error. Uh, let's see here. Yeah, boy, I messed up. Because that's an assignment. That's not a comparison. There we go. We fixed that. Let's try running it now. Oh, I've done it again. Multiple times. Great. OK, I'm embarrassed by this. OK, let's try running it again. All right, so I, I rolled a 10 first. Then I rolled a 6, 3, and a 7. And of course, I lost because I didn't make my mark. Let's try running it again. And um, this time, whoa, I rolled a 4, a 10, an 8, a 3, a 9, an 8, a 5, a 6, 11, 8, 10, 9, and then a 7, and I lost. Wow, look how many rolls I had to make before I, I lost here. So obviously, I've got to make a 4, right? So uh, I'm not getting, I'm not getting uh, a 4. There's nowhere a 4, 4, 4, 4, until I get a 7. And I lost. So let's play it one more time. And again, I rolled a 7 instantly after rolling a 4, and I lost again. So this program, OK, so I, got, I lost there on a first roll. That's what I was waiting for, for a loss or a win on the first roll. And um, I mean, I could make the program better by actually printing out some of the names, um, you know, like boxcars and, and, and snake eyes and things like that. But that's OK. So here is your next assignment. What I want you guys to do is to take this code, and, and this is the really cool part, OK? Now, this game, this, this, this program that's staring you in the face right now, only plays this game one time. What I want you to do is I want you to modify either your code or this code that I've written, but make it play. 10,000 times and keep track of how many. So in other words, listen, I don't want it to print all this you win, you lose stuff. So get rid of the printing you win, you lose. But I want you to keep track right, of your wins and losses. Now, in, in, in essence, right, here, here, here. In essence, you don't really have to keep track of your losses. You only have to keep track of your wins because you're going to play a fixed amount of games. Okay, You're going to play 10,000 games. Now, you don't know how many rolls there are per game. But after, after playing 10,000 games, what I'd like you to print out is what is your percentage of winning? In other words, Calculate the percentage of winning. Now, if, I hope you guys kind of know how to calculate a percentage. It's basically you're going to go, OK, for, for example, if I won, uh, if I won uh, 5,000 out of the 10,000 games, my winning percentage would be 
And the way to calculate that is you'd go 5,000 divided by 10,000, the 10,000 being a fixed number because you're going to play that many times, and then just simply multiply by 100 and you should get 50, and that's your percentage. Okay? So I'll pause the video, pause the video now and uh, give it a shot. It's not, it's not very hard, okay? This is not, this, writing this was much harder than what you're about to do. Give it a shot. Pause the video. All right, we're back. So now we're going to do the solution to uh, playing 10,000 games. So I don't want to print stuff here. So instead of actually printing, uh, you know, instead of printing um, you lose or you win, let's get rid of this. And let's actually make a, a Boolean variable. And let's say win is true. So Boolean variable in this case is a perfect variable type to use because it, it's either going to have two states, uh, true or false. So we're going to, uh, oops, no, no, this is, this is wrong. This is win equals false. Uh, so if you get 2, 3, 12, you lost. Okay. If you get a 7 or 11, that's, that's, a, that's a win. So we'll say win is true. So we're not, notice I'm removing the print statements, right? Because obviously if we play 10,000 times, I don't want you win, you lose, you win, you lose to scroll 10,000 times over the, the screen. The other thing which I want to do is um, I kind of have to go come down here. So notice this if block here, right? So only ever one of these things is ever going to occur. So if I, if I win, None of the rest of this if block is, is going to get executed, okay? If I, sorry, if I lose here, I mean on line 12, if I lose, none of the rest from lines 13 down to 25 is going to be, is all, it's all going to be skipped, okay? So if I win here, so if I, if I don't get 2, 3, or 12, but I get 7 or 11 and I win, now if line 14 is executed, nothing below it gets executed, right? Because this is an if ladder. We go if, elif, else. So only ever one of those three things will actually be executed. So what about if we go into here? Well, here, instead of saying um, print, obviously I'm gonna do the same thing as, I'm gonna go print e win equals true, okay? And if I lose, I'm gonna say, uh, win equals false. Okay, then here is where I'm going to actually have to keep track of how many wins and losses I have. Okay, so here I gotta before I start the the program, I'm gonna actually go. Let's just let's take this line out, and let's say here. Let's say wins. Now this is a different variable, right? Let's say, notice there's an S on this one, right? Wins equals zero. So that's, that's not a Boolean, that's an integer. Because I have to start with something because I'm going to keep adding to it. So I'm going to say here, after the game is played, I'm going to say if win, now notice I can say that because win is, going, is a Boolean data type. So it's either if, I can say if win because if win is true, that means I've, 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 I won the game. So I'm going to say wins equals wins plus one, okay? Um, and, and that's all I need, just to keep track of how many times I'm winning. That's it. Now, the thing is, this is only playing once, so watch how cool this is now, okay? I'm now... I, not, the, not this part, because I don't want it to always go back to zero. But starting at this line here, I'm going to select this whole thing and hit tab so that I can move it in. And then right here, I'm going to go, and because I know how many times I'm going to play, I'm going to play 10,000 games. So I can say 4x in range, right? Uh, 10,000, there we go. And so now, this code in here, notice this, I can't put that inside the loop, right? Or the, it's not gonna keep track of how many wins or losses I have. But now, for x in range 10,000, 
I'm now going to roll. I'm going to play 10,000 times. I don't want this to print to either because I don't want um, I don't want to print anything out because it's just going to scroll across the screen and it's. Go I already know the program works. I've tested it before, so uh, that's it. So at this point, let's just go um, print wins now. Obviously, if, if I run this, okay, let's hit F5, and, uh, oh, I'm still printing something. Where is all my print statements coming from? Uh, where is my print statement? Um, line number 19. Yeah, I don't want that in there either. So let's try that again. Yeah, so 4,904. Now, that's not giving me a percentage, though. So I'm going to have to divide that by 10,000. OK, and if I run that, that gives me a percentage, but it's as with a decimal place. So I could multiply it by 100. And let's see if that works. Yeah, there you go. So 49%. Let's try, let's try running it again. 49%, great. 48%. Notice it plays 10,000 games really, really quickly. Okay, Nothing's being printed out. So this is correct, by the way. So if you think about this, this is actually, in terms of most casino games, this is actually a really good chance of winning, uh, although it's never going to be more than 50%, because if it was, then the casino would lose money. right? But even that 1% that it is, like, you're actually lower than 50%. And so therefore, the, the casino will always make that 1%. The casino is always going to make 51%. And the players are always only going to make 49%. So that was pretty easy. Uh, the next, here's the next cool thing I want you to try to do is I want you to uh, implement a betting value. So in other words, start out with, uh, let's say, start out with, uh, well, he here's, a, here's an interesting thing. How about you start out with zero money? Although then that doesn't really make sense, right? Because then you have to go into debt. But that's fine. OK, you can start out with zero money. And you could bet, let's say, $2 on every game, and then see by the end uh, how much money you have. And after you do that, I'm actually going to teach you a betting uh, strategy which will cause you to always win. That's right. This, this course is amazing because now you, you are going to, you can just go to Vegas and woohoo, come back a millionaire because I am going to teach you how to always win at this game. All right, so, uh, but before I do that, try to implement betting so that you start out with a, you know, basically like up here, you start out with a bank account, what's in your bank, let's say zero. And every time you win, you, 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 you add two dollars. And so, so in this case, right, what's our bet going to be? Our bet's going to be two dollars. And so when you, when you lose, you lose the two dollars. So you subtract the bet from your bank account. But if you win, you add it to your bank account. OK, pause the video now. This is an easy one. This shouldn't take you very long. Pause the video and give it a shot. So at the end, you should print out how much money you have in your bank account. And by the way, it's more than likely going to be a negative uh, value after playing 10,000 games. Pause the video. OK, we're back. So this is actually a really easy solution. It's not hard at all. Because all we're going to do is if we if we lose, win is false, we're simply going to say bank equals bank minus the bet. 
So we've lost the money, so take that bet out of your bank account. I, I, know, I know we're starting out with a bank account of zero. You could easily change that and say, you know, you start out with $100 or $10,000 or $100,000. It doesn't really matter. But this is kind of nice because now you know that if you're positive at the end, you've made money. And if you're negative at the end, then you've lost money. Um, so, and obviously here it would be bank equals uh, bank plus, oops, plus the bet. Right? So if you win, you add money to your bank. If you lose, you subtract money from your bank. And essentially, um, oops, essentially then it's the same thing down here. Right? If you win, you add money to the bank. And if you lose, you subtract money from the bank. And then finally, down here, you could say, just say, uh, print bank. So that's good enough. OK? So let's run it. And notice, now um, we lost $140. So $2, every time we're betting $2, right? Uh, we lost $168. And let's try again. We lost $500. And we lost $228. And we lost $312. And we lost $320. Notice every single time we're losing. So is there any way, OK, so this is you know subtracting. This is adding. Is there any way that you could come out a winner all the time, every time? Wow. Well, guess what? There is a way. And the way to do it is a specific name for it, too. It's called the Martingale system. And there's a little caveat, though. Unfortunately, uh, although this system is foolproof, and let me show you how it works, there is one tiny flaw to it. But first, let's go to, um, let's go to, and I'll, oops. Let me show you how it works. Let's say you bet $2, OK, and you lose. OK, so let's say what's in our bank right now. OK, so we've got negative 2. Let's say you play again. But this time, instead of playing $2, you're going to double your bet. And you lose again. Oh, no. Now, how much money have we lost in total? Well, now our bank is we're at minus 6. You see that? Because we lost two and we lost four. Now, here's the Martingale system. Essentially, it says you double your bet every time. OK, so let's now bet $8, right? That's double four. And let's say we've got bad luck again and we lose again. Oh, no. Oh, gosh. Well, how much money have we lost now? Well, we've lost $14 now, right? Because six and eight is 14, right? But here's the trick. Let's double again, and now let's say you win, right? Because you double eight, and now you're, now you're betting 16 bucks, and you win. Well, now if you add 16, now you're at a positive value, and you're at plus two. So even though you've, wa you've lost three times, and by the way, it doesn't matter how many times you lose. As long as you keep doubling your bet every time, eventually you'll win all your money back and your original bet, which was two bucks. So you can never walk away a loser. So why doesn't everybody use this Martingale system to win? And the answer is... And the answer is because casinos have a betting maximum limit. So it's very rare to find a betting place that has an unlimited betting amount. Now, if you say, well, maybe there aren't a lot of people that would be able to afford it, but honestly, 
uh, you have to have a lot. You have to have, first of all, you have to have, be able to have a lot of money to continue to betting, to continue to bet when you're on a losing streak, because remember you're doubling your money. So it doesn't take very long to go into you know hundreds of thousands of dollars, uh, because remember you're you're doubling every time. So, um, but unfortunately, it doesn't work because. If a, let's say if a casino has a, a betting limit of ten thousand dollars, well, as soon as you go above that, you, you can't go above that. So now there's no way you can't double your bet. So therefore, there's no way to make your money back. You're you're forced to lower your bet, in which case you're back to betting normally, and the house wins. You can't you can't win your money back. So essentially, the martingale would work, provided that there'd be no upper limit, and provided that uh, you know, no upper limit on the bet, and provided that you had like an infinite bank account. Uh, so, um, now, n nonetheless, in this program, uh, there's nothing stopping us, right, from uh, writing this code in order to never lose. So let's do it. So, um, if you notice here, our bet starts out at two dollars. And so what we need to do is we need to, every time we lose, okay, so if we lose, we need to double our bet. So let's come here. First of all, obviously, we got to uh, take the money out of our bank account if we lose. But then also what we're going to do is we're going to uh, double our bet right there. Bet equals two times bet. Uh, and now if we win, on the other hand, what we're going to do is we're going to make our bet, we're going to put our bet back down to $2, okay? So after you win, we've, we've put them, our winning in our bank account, then you're going to lower your bet again because obviously you don't want to start betting. After you win, you don't want to start betting at a gigantic amount. So we gotta do the same thing here. So we're gonna say if you win, uh, make your bet $2. And if you lose, then uh, double your bet. Okay? And um, at this point, let's print out how much money we've got after we play this. Let's try it. Wow, much better. That's much better. Oh yeah, I like this. Okay, you remember before we were losing like around 200, just around $200 or so. And so now we've won almost $10,000. Nice, let's, let's play again. Oh, awesome, another $10,000, nice. Oh, so it seems to be always just approximately under $10,000 that we're winning consistently. Obviously, we're winning consistently because we're playing 10,000 games, right? But this is fantastic. This is this is money in the bank. All I have to do is go and play 10,000 games and which is going to take quite a lot of time, but hey, it's like basically almost $1 per game that I'm winning. Uh, the question now is, of course, everybody's thinking, yeah, but what is the maximum bet that you have to make? So if you want, here's like a side uh, bonus assignment is pause the video now and try and figure out what the maximum bet during all those 10,000 games that you played, what was the maximum bet that you ever made? So pause the video now and give it a shot. Okay, we're back. So here is the solution to uh, finding your maximum bet. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to make yet another variable. I'm going to call it max bet. And initially I'll just, in, well in fact I'll just make it two. Because I know that my bet's never going to be less than two. Okay. And then what I'm going to do here is I'm going to say every time I double my bet, I'll say if um, 
if bet is greater than max bet, then uh, max bet equals bet. See, so in other words, it's, if the if the bet I'm making now is bigger than the maximum bet that I've that I've previously made, which starts out by the way at, at two dollars, right? So, uh, so then make the maximum bet equal to that new bet, and that's it. So I'm just going to copy this because I'm going to I'm going to need it again, and um, so I'll put that wherever I'm doubling my bet. So. Uh, not there, right? Because I'm I'm reducing my bet there, um, but right here. Okay, there. Done. And so now, I'm going to not only am I going to print how much money I bet, but I'm also going to print. Um, so I'll say like for example here, uh, you have. Right, so, oops, no, this is an F string. So, I'll say you have bank, and then I'll say uh, max bet was max bet. Okay, let's give it a shot. So, I won, I've got $10,000, but my maximum bet was. 4,000. Not too bad. Uh, if I had to take a guess, let's just pretend that the maximum bet is $10,000 at a table. That's not bad. Uh, that's doable. Uh oh, SpaghettiO. Maximum bet was $262,000. Wow. Whoa. Okay, so that's some serious coin right there. Let's try again. So that's that's over over a quarter million dollars. Okay, uh, still over ten thousand dollars, thirty-two thousand dollars. The Martingale system is not going to work in that situation. Again, one hundred and thirty-one thousand uh, dollars. Not going to work there. And notice my winning is always approximately the same. I'm always winning just under ten thousand dollars because that's. Uh, corresponds to the, uh, you know, usually about 49% winning. Uh, again, $16,000. That's actually pretty low for my maximum bet. Uh, wow, that one was re that one was doable. That one was fun. Only $4,000 maximum bet. Again, only $4,000 maximum bet. Okay, 16. I we had one that was really huge. Let me see if I can get another really big one. 32,000. 16,000, come on, 16,000, 8,000, 8,000, 4,000, oh, I don't know if I'm going to get another really big one. Oh, well, um, well that was 65,000, not too bad. In, ess in essence, you know, it's, it's many times going over $10,000. So anyways, I hope you enjoyed this, uh, this video. And... Um, it's kind of fun. You can, you know, doing make this is basically a simulation at this point because we're doing something so many times, like ten thousand times. Then we're we're determining what the mathematical statistic. We're kind of doing like a mathematical analysis on it by trial and error because computers are so fast. You can do that. So uh, I hope you enjoyed it, and um, yeah, you know, if you have any questions or comments, uh, put them below. And uh, see you next time.